Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. We are so happy you've joined us today for another great program. I'm Orlena Brazier, your host today, and with me is Georgiana Gillette. She is from the Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization, and she is the Transportation Program Manager. We've been able to speak a little bit behind the scenes here, and she is just a delightful guest that has so much good information for you so you're going to want to stay tuned and pay attention to all the stuff that she has to talk about. Our first topic is going to be about pedestrians and bicycle safety. But before we get to that, I want to welcome her. Thank, Thank you, you, Georgiana, for Thank coming. You. And I want you to ex tell our audience a little bit about yourself and where you came from and what you're up to. All right. Um, I, uh, my name is Georgiana Gillette, and um, I worked with the Florida Department of Transportation for uh, uh, roughly 18 years. Wow. And um, I had the opportunity uh, to move to Brevard. I lived in Brevard County, and so there was a, a position available uh, within the Sp Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization, uh, which is a, very much a partner with the FDOT doing the same type of work. And, uh, and so um, basically I'm the Transportation Program Manager, and my role is really to, to work with the Florida Department of Transportation and our local elected officials and our municipalities to uh, plan and program transportation projects with state and federal dollars. Wow, and you are doing a great job, I can Thank tell, <laughs> because we've seen a lot of good things taking place. And we really wanted to hit the issue of transportation because we see in our newspapers constantly so many issues and problems mm -hmm. developing from pedestrian and bicycle safety because that is transportation, our feet. Yes. <laughs> and riding bicycles, right. there's so many cyclists and we live in sunny Florida where most people are out on their feet or mm -hmm. riding bicycles all the time. And, right. and so we're anxious to, to get started on this topic. Okay. So with walking and cycling being used as a form of transportation, why is pedestrian and bicycle safety so critically important here in our communities? Well, um, pedestrians and bicycles, bicyclists are considered vulnerable road users. Um, and basically it's because of the lack of protection in case they were hit mm -hmm. and just on a side note motorcycles motorcycles are considered that as well oh, okay. but the problem that we're having is with the bicyclists and the pedestrians um, you know as you mentioned we have fantastic weather we like to get out and exercise. Um, a lot of tourists. <laughs> a lot of tourists. A lot of tourists. We also have an aging population here in Florida and um, and also, I think the lack of knowledge of traffic rules is a big problem. Uh, the growth of Florida's population, and of course, as you mentioned, the high tourism rate mm -hmm. is contributing to a lot of the pedestrian and bicycle deaths here in Florida. My goodness, I know there's been a lot, and I know you have some statistics yes. for us. Um, so. For the past four years, Florida has ranked the worst in the nation uh, in the rate of pedestrian fatalities. Now, we just got some new numbers, but that was four years in a row, the worst in the nation. From the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, uh, we did get some good news, and apparently the new numbers are in, and we're ranked number five. Wow. Um, so the most dangerous is Delaware. You mean we're not the worst? We're not the worst <laughs> in pedestrian. Thank you, God. <laughs> exactly, in pedestrian deaths. Uh, Delaware, New Mexico, South Carolina, and Louisiana, and then, of course, Florida's number five. So we have made some progress in that area. Unfortunately, still, uh, there's 500 pedestrians that are killed um, uh, every year, um, and that's still too high. That is way yes. too high. Um, now, Currently, for bicycling deaths, we are the highest uh, of any mm. state in the nation. Really? And so we are at 0.57% per 100,000. So basically, researchers determine the worst states by looking at the number of fatalities per 100,000 in population. My and so goodness. we basically, for bicyclists, 0.57 per 100,000, that's more than double the national rate of 0.23. So we, uh, we are, that is a list, the top of the list you do not want to be in in Florida. <laughs> um, 
so because of this, the, the DOT has made pedestrian and bicycle safety their most critical priority. Um, you know, we were they, reading that in the paper. Yes, and uh, something has got to be done. Uh, the governor and the Florida Department of Transportation, working with all of the MPOs, um, has decided that you know it's time that enough is enough, and they have really been aggressively trying to find ways to understand this problem. Um, there's also a focused initiative on the top 15 counties in Florida uh, with the highest severe injury and fatality rate. And by the way, Orange County and Brevard County is in that top 15. Wow. So at least, you know, the because we're the busiest, is our population the largest? I, I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, but, you know, it's, they're focusing their attention on those top 15 counties in Florida to kind of see what's going on there. So the big question is really, you know, to what extent is the roadway dangerous or is it the people using the roadway that is causing this problem? And Do so there has- it's using? <laughs> I, I think it's a little of both. Oh my gosh. I think yes. it's both. A little bit of negligence um, on both ends. Exactly. Especially with cell phones, people crossing the street, they're not even looking, pulling, yes. walking out in front uh, of people. Is people that are, true? People are very distracted. Yes. Uh, we're, we are all so very busy. And in I the think- the cars and on foot. It is the predicament of our lives, really. We're too busy. Um, and, and so that is, a, that is a big problem. And I think a lot of people do not understand the, the, the traffic laws. And so the department has really been trying to come up with some solutions or what are, what are some ways uh, to tackle this issue for pedestrian and bicycle deaths. And so they have come up with some ideas uh, and they are implementing a lot of these. Um, and really in a broad sense the solution lies within the three E's they call them engineering education and enforcement mm, and you nice. really are going to have to hit it um, in a comprehensive approach and uh, it you know this is everyone's problem um, because it could affect you know one of our family members very easily yes, or even us <laughs> absolutely anybody can be involved absolutely well, now that we know of these horrible statistics and, and that we do have a major problem, what are what is FDOT and what are we all trying to do about it? Well, um, from an engineering standpoint, um, the DOT has completely uh, updated their plans preparation manual, which is really, um, you know, I'd say from, from a DOT standpoint, it's almost kind of like their Bible because there's so much you know, performance driven and standards and, you know, it has to be in the plans prep manual. And so what they've done is they have created higher standards for uh, bicycle lanes. Are they redoing the manual then? <laughs> they, they, they have rewritten a lot of the manual. Good. And so instead of a four foot minimum bicycle lane, they have made it seven foot um, wow. to give, to allow for more, um, room for the bicyclists. Yeah, because they've been literally so small. Yes, that it's, exactly. And with people looking at their cell phones and adjusting radios or mm -hmm. eating or whatever, mm -hmm. they can so easily just Absolutely. go right into the bicycle lane. Yes, so that, that is one thing that they're doing. Uh, crosswalks, when, uh, when the DOT touches a roadway, when they go out to do just a simple resurfacing, um, what they are doing is they're bringing the roadway up to these new standards, putting mm. in more high emphasis crosswalk areas for pedestrians, Great. Uh, you know, pedestrian um, uh, lights flashing to kind of bring attention to motorists. They're, they're doing things, uh, we, you know, we live in an area here in Florida where the roads are very antiquated mm -hmm. and they were not built for pedestrians and bicyclists. And so that's one of the challenges right there. And so it costs a lot of money to go back and retrofit mm -hmm. these old roadways that we have. But what the department is doing is when they touch the road for even maintenance, they're doing everything they can to at least bring it up to standard. So it's slowly chipping away. And the FDOT is seeing to it that this is happening. Absolutely, absolutely. Now this is on state roads. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, we do have a lot of uh, city streets uh, mm -hmm. and county roads that the DOT does not maintain. We still that's have right. the issue there. And, uh, and the, you know, that's um, something that I think the average citizen doesn't realize. You've got your state roads 
but then you have your other roadways that are maintained uh, and owned by other municipalities that still, you know, has this problem. Oh boy. And so it's, it's a challenge. It is very much a, ch a challenge. Well, who's responsible for the county roads? The county roads would be the county commission commissioners mm -hmm. uh, within that area. And are they as, you know, focused on getting us in better shape? I do not think that they are at the level, uh, clearly, that DOT is. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the, the department has a lot more money. Um, you know, the economy is starting to come back. Uh, but, you know, a lot of municipalities are really struggling with just resurfacing roads, much less doing extra amenities. But, but I do think they understand, and, I, and, and this is, right. uh, I think that they understand what's going on here, and they're doing everything that they can. Uh, it just seems to be very much of a challenge. From an education standpoint, uh, the DOT has their uh, very large uh, Alert Today, Alive Tomorrow campaign. Yeah, I don't, um, I've seen billboards uh, out billboards on the interstate. Billboards and in the paper. <laughs> in the we paper. get the paper yes. all of the time for our, mm -hmm. you know, joy in our town yes. issues. And they've really, uh, they sponsored a, uh, an Infinity uh, NASCAR. Uh, uh -huh. they're, they're doing some very, um, you know, powerful uh, ways to just get the word out there to, to kind of help educate people because what has been going on in the past doesn't seem to be working too much. So they're trying some different ways of doing that. So we, we as citizens, how can we um, help this problem? We have like about a minute or so to okay. go on um, this segment. I, I think that uh, citizens really, motorists need to be aware uh, to just look for pedestrians. Mm. Um, you know, when you're coming out on a side street uh, and you are looking to your left and, sure. you know, and there may be a pedestrian coming from your right, uh, even a bicyclist that may be riding on the wrong side of the street. You know, bicyclists should be riding in the flow of traffic, mm. not on the opposite side of the street. The flow of traffic. And, right. uh, and so they're looking, looking, looking to make sure they can pull out. They're looking to their left and they don't see people walking to the right. Wow. Um, so we have to be more aware. Be more aware. We need to check and we need to really care about what's happening yes. when we're driving. And we need to be paying attention as pedestrians walking, bicyclists, bicycling exactly. of our surroundings and what's happening. Absolutely. That's what I hear you saying. And my goodness, Georgiana, this has been so good and so interesting hearing about pedestrian and bicycle safety. And we thank you for sharing about this. Thank you. And before we come back to our next segment, we're going to run to a 30 second. PSA, we'll see you in just a moment. Would we see our roads differently if cars weren't cars? Nine pedestrians are killed in Florida every week. In Tampa, a pedestrian is injured every seven hours. All of us need to look out for each other. Because the blind spots are everywhere. Open your eyes at seetheblindspots.com. Hello and welcome back to Joy in Our Town. We are so happy you've joined us. I am here with the delightful young lady, Georgiana Gillette, who's the Transportation Program Manager for Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization. And I wanted to let you know that in case you just tuned in with us. She's had 23 years experience in the transportation field, and we are so delighted to have you with us. And now we're gonna talk about transportation planning. Okay. And you are so knowledgeable because you've been around so long and transportation affects all of us because we have to get around the city, right. the state, the country. So um, give us a little bit about what is transportation planning? Well, um, transportation planning uh, and, and what a transportation planning organization does, we are a regional multi-jurisdictional agency. And um, we are tasked with planning and programming uh, state and federal transportation dollars. Uh, a lot of folks, you know, think that the Florida Department of Transportation is out, uh, you know, uh, selecting projects on state roads and putting in sidewalks uh, where they deem it necessary. Uh, but really, the TPOs and your elected officials 
Uh, we have 19 members, uh, 19 elected officials on our mm -hmm. TPO board. Um, that for, is good. For Brevard County, and that covers um, the municipalities within Brevard County, and it includes the all five of the Board of County Commissioners. And so they really are spending, they're directing your tax dollars. And so... Wow, um, that's good news. <laughs> it, and so what, what the TPO does, you know, we have a lot of tools to help direct us on where to program the projects with this very limited state and federal money that we get. We have a long-range transportation plan, which is a 25-year plan that we update every five years. And basically, it's developing a forecasting travel demand mo model, which looks at the mobility needs throughout the region. Um, and so it looks at new development that may be coming up, so you, you're kind of aware where your needs are going to be long term. We also have um, a state of the system report that we produce every year, uh, which looks at the network, all the roadways within our area um, in the county. And we look to see what the crash history is, what the safety problems are, what is the average daily traffic in certain areas. So these are tools that we use to, uh, to help select projects uh, al along with our local municipalities and eventually we come up with a priority list uh, and have it adopted by our board and then we turn it over to the DOT and they fund these projects with available state and federal money. So I think a lot of folks don't realize that it is very important uh, um, that it's not the department that is doing this, that they are a partner with us and they have the money mm -hmm. to be able to fund these projects and, and we work very closely together um, to try and make this happen. I know they do a lot of freeway work, like I-4 is yes. right now. What a mess. When's that going to be <laughs> yes, done? Yes, <laughs> yes. That is, uh, and, and that is very much a regional project, even uh -huh. though I-4 uh, doesn't run through Brevard County. It, yes. it is one of those projects of statewide significance. Mm -hmm. um, and so that a lot of money, a lot of money is directed at that project, but that's where the need is. And that's where the traffic is. And mm -hmm. so, you know, even though within Florida it may be taken away from different areas, you put the money where the need is. Right. Yeah. I like that they do that and that they research it mm -hmm. and that they have all these county commissioners yes. and different people on board, mm -hmm. the political end too, so that they can really help monitor and, you know, there's always wisdom in the council of many, correct? Right. <laughs> that is correct. So what are some of the issues that you see currently in Bavard County that they're facing? Well, um, you know, I think the biggest issue is money. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of need uh, and there's not enough money to go around. Uh, even the Department of Transportation, um, you know, 90% of their funding uh, from the uh, Transportation Trust Fund comes from gas tax revenue. Mm. Um, but, you know, as you mentioned, you know, I think we have 98 million tourists a year. I, I mean, there is... Wow. That there is a there's a lot of need <laughs> a lot of yeah. need and um, a lot of taxes being paid I yes <laughs> yes um, but there never seems to be enough money to to do all the things that we need to do uh, there's we, we struggle putting in sidewalks on mm. uh, roadways um, in places that we know that need them you know sometimes when you see you know a, a little uh, cow path you see uh, uh, in the grass area, an mm -hmm. area where that's that's where a sidewalk should go. And the reason why a sidewalk is not going there is because of lack of money. Um, and so money, I think, is the number one issue, not only for the state, but for, um, our, uh, for, for the county uh, and for the different municipalities. We, we, our need is far surpasses the amount of money that we have to work with. My goodness. So what are some of the roles and responsibilities that the transportation um, planning deals with? Um, well, we, uh, we plan not only big, uh, you know, uh, projects such as I-4 in mm -hmm. uh, Metro Plan Orlando in, in your area, uh, which yes. planned <laughs> I-4, uh, but we also have some projects uh, such as the Beach Line in our area. Um, we, it's not just um, roadway projects that we have to look at. We have to look at all modes. Um, uh, I know for the beach line, 
uh, the Beach Line provides a critical connection between uh, the Orlando International Airport and Port Canaveral. And, oh and it's very much a... Um, Towards Cocoa Beach. Yes. And <laughs> That's our state of license for, <laughs> for the station. <laughs> okay. And, and to the beaches, so it is, it is a, a very critical roadway, not uh, as needed as I-4, but it is on the priority list, on the TPO's priority list uh, for future um, construction. And we did uh, manage uh, to work with DOT for a design contract. And, you know, the beach line is owned by and maintained by three different agencies. So you've got the Expressway Authority, the Florida Turnpike, and the FDOT. Wow. And all of those sections are in different phases. Uh, Including for, the, the regular street areas? Um, or are you basically... Well, I'm just talking about the beach oh, line, the yes, Expressway. Oh, yes, right there, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, so these are, these are challenges that we have is just is just the amount of money that that we we know where the needs are we just do not have enough money to to move forward and and get them done as quickly as we want to get them done um, also you know transportation doesn't happen overnight when you build roads it literally can take 10 15 20 years That's by the great. time of by the time the project gets on the priority list and it goes through your uh, PD&E study, which is your environmental study, which mm. is the first step. Yes. And it moves through the process of design and right-of-way acquisition and construction. Uh, you, you are talking millions and millions of dollars wow. and years in the planning. And so, uh, you know, from a for a project to go from conception to construction, it can take easily uh, 15, 20 years. Oh my goodness. So that's that's a big challenge for us. <laughs> that is. I mean, boy, we can be grandparents by then. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Retired. My goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. So s please share us with some of the current regional things that you're okay. working on right now. I projects. had mentioned the beach line, and, and that's going to be a big one. There is no money for, um, for right-of-way and construction uh, for the beach line widening the sixth landing of the beach line at this time and I think the expressway authority and the turnpike is even looking to potentially um, study whether it can be eight laned in the future wow. um, so uh, Won't but that be nice yes wow. so the section in Brevard County as I mentioned is uh, we just let a design contract so that will be moving forward for design uh, which is where they will kind of have a better idea of what the right-of-way impacts are going to be so that's a big one there's a, a different kind of project I wanted to mention um, called the Coast to Coast Trail because it's, it's not just about roadways. Uh, we cannot just continue to ride, widen roadways. Um, you're going to run out of room eventually. So you have to look at... It doesn't seem like we would <laughs> because there seems like there's so much land. Yes, that's true. We, but yeah. you know, we do have a lot. But, that I understand, yeah. <laughs> but the Coast to Coast Trail is interesting in that it's a 250-mile trail uh, that will be linking communities from St. Petersburg all the way to Titusville. Wow. And um, it That's will be great. a multi-use paved trail, you know, so that folks can get out and explore Florida on foot or on a bicycle. And uh, it, is all, it is at different stages throughout the state. Um, and the nice thing is there is a dedicated funding source for the trail uh, from, the, from the DOT. And FDOT will be responsible for building the trail, and they are working very closely with the MPOs, the TPOs, uh, such as myself, uh, the local municipalities, and the um, uh, Florida Greenways and Trails Council. And so this would be very much uh, um, an investment uh, wow. for Florida uh, from an economic standpoint. It, it, it is just, people just love it. They yeah, love it'll it. be a blessing to the people. Yes, absolutely. So I think that would be, that's, that's one that is, um, I think, very exciting. You know, it, it's, it's not motorist driven, but it is a very important regional project. Um, in Brevard County. In, in Brevard County, and eventually in Brevard County where it will come into the Coast to Coast Trail, which is eventually will, will be going up into Volusia County. But the, um, the Coast to Coast Trail will be going across the Max Brewer Bridge mm -hmm. in Titusville over through the wildlife refuge to the beach. Wow. And so that would be a really <laughs> nice. uh, uh, 
neat thing to get on your bicycle and, and uh, you know, you may not be able to drive, you know, ride from St. Petersburg to Titusville, but you can do sh sh short, you know, stints right. and, with the family. So it's very exciting yes. and, and we're... That's we're exciting. So that. transportation involves so many different things. Yes. What is one of your um, motorist type of... Uh, projects that you're putting together? Well, the beach line is the main, from a regional perspective, I think the, the beach, beach line, line really, is the number one. really fits the bill. I-95 is another big one. Now, I know uh, it does not run through um, this area, but I-95 uh, is completely six-laned. The very last piece up in the north part of the county is under construction right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was a project that we had on our priority list that is finally coming to completion. So all of I-95, the full 72 miles throughout Brevard County, um, is will be six-laned, uh, which has been the goal. Mm -hmm. There are no plans to eight-lane it, although right. the traffic, sometimes, you know, when we do traffic counts, it almost warrants it in certain yes. segments. Uh, but that is not in our long-range plan to do that. Mm -hmm. But we do, that was an accomplishment, was the six-laning of I-95 throughout great. the county. Well, we have one more quick question, okay. less than a minute to answer, but um, how can the citizens, how can we as citizens become more involved with uh, the transportation systems? Well, I would, I would encourage um, citizens to attend your local um, metropolitan planning organization meetings. Um, you know, Metroplan Orlando has a, a wonderful website. We have a website, spacecoasttpo.com. So they can go to the website, they yes. can put in things, they can find out when things are happening. Yes. Um, and they can participate like that and put in their ideas and thoughts. And absolutely. Their complaints, but also, you know, congratulate them on the good things yes. they're seeing done. We, we want to hear from the citizens. Right. Uh, we do That's a lot of public great. involvement, and it's important for you to help us spend your tax dollars. And so yes. you have a say in that, and, and, uh, and it is very important. So we really would like to hear from you, um, even if, if it's a com complaint. That's what we're there for, and if yes. we don't have the answer, we can direct you to um, you know, where you can get an answer. Um, and, and help you as best we can. Okay, Georgiana, thank, thank you. you so very much for coming. We thank you for joining us today and learning all about these great transportation planning projects that are going on here in our great Orlando and Brevard counties. Thank you so much for joining us. You go and have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. God bless you. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.